everybody, my name is Phil Rowley and I'm part of Rio's Ambassador Team. On today's how-to video, I'm going to show you how I like to use attractor patterns on lakes using sinking lines. So what's an attractor pattern? Well, to a trout, an attractor pattern is much like an irritating party guest. Not only are they irritating, they're loud and obnoxious. And trout see these loud, obnoxious flies and want to get them out of the party, so they pound them with ruthless aggression. It's a lot of fun. We're trying to trigger bites out of non-feeding fish or fish that are targeted on really tiny stuff. So let's get out there and give this stuff a whirl. All right, we've anchored in a likely looking spot. Let's take a second to review today's setup. Um, I've got a fast sinking line on, in this case an InTouch Deep 5. Um, with these techniques you can use a range of sinking lines from an InTouch Camelux all the way down to the Deep 7 that sinks at 7 inches per second. I've got a really simple level leader set up that's going to help drag my buoyant fly down. And that's simply uh, 3 to 4 feet of uh, PowerFlex Plus Tippet loop to loop connection to my line. Then I've added a trout size tippet ring and to that using an improved clinch knot I've attached another three to four feet of Floriflex Plus Tippet. On the point fly, I've got a buoyant booby pattern. And then off a small dropper, I've got a little water boatman pattern. We've got boatmen around. One of the reasons we fish attractors is not only to attract fish to eat the fly, it's the attractor fly itself, in this case the booby, but also to draw fish to more natural presentations such as this water boatman. So this buoyant fly on the point and the water boatman is what we often refer to as a washing line because the buoyant fly helps hold up the natural weighted fly in this case. So let's give it a whirl and see if we can induce something to eat it. Some of you may be wondering, why would you use an attractor pattern? And probably more importantly, when would you use it? The why for me is pretty simple. Because of the pace we fish these flies, the aggressive nature of it, they slam them, they pound them, and everybody loves a good tug. The when is a little more finite. Uh, summer months, for example, when trout are deeper water targeting smaller uh, prey items such as zooplankton, we often use attractor patterns to trigger them out of that slumber and also to mirror the colors of the zooplankton. If the weather's changed and trout are off the bite, you've tried every imitative technique you can think of, it's time to trigger a grab, the attractor is the way to go. And if you've had a lake that's been recently stocked with smaller juvenile fish, they're very curious, they're aggressive, in many instances they're learning how to feed, so they're very prone to taking attractor patterns and techniques. So there's the why and the when of attractor patterns. So I'd like to take a moment to review my favorite attractor patterns. Attractor patterns are loud, obnoxious. What we're trying to do here is trigger a response from a basically a non-feeding fish, so it's either appealing to its territoriality, aggression, curiosity. These flies are loud, noisy, obnoxious, bright colors. They wobble in the water, they pitch and they undulate. So my favorite ones include the booby with its foam eyeballs, blobs that have no foam eyeballs, in fact no foam on them at all, and often we incorporate bead heads in them too nowadays to jig them a little bit. Then we have the jelly mop or what's it, which is essentially a blob with a, uh, a mop tail, and then the fab, or foam arse blob it's called, because it's got a foam tail on it, uh, similar with a body similar uh, to the blob. And they're all generally, we tie them out of these fritz materials, jelly fritz, regular fritz, daphnia fritz, slush jelly. There's a whole pile of new materials out there that make tying these flies a lot of fun, and they fish well when you're trying to trigger that reactive, non-feeding response out of a trout. So we're anchored up in a likely looking spot. We're sitting on the edge of a uh, weed bed that falls off into deep water. I've got my uh, deep five line ready to go. So what we're going to do is just uh, get the flies out there. You want to cast as far as you comfortably can. The double haul really helps with this. And if you want to learn more about the double haul, be sure to check out Simon's excellent how-to video on the double haul. We're going to let the flies sink, depending on how deep the water is, the sink rate of our line. Once we get the flies down to where we think the fish are, rod tips in the water, and now we start the retrieves. And the retrieves are brisk. So strip retrieve like this, three to four inch pulls, five inch pulls, six inch pulls with pauses. We're trying to get that fish to follow and crush the fly. If you're comfortable with it, you could also do a really brisk hand twist retrieve. And again, Retrieve, 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 and pause. Retrieve, retrieve, and retrieve, retrieve, and pause. Or you could turbocharge it with the roly-poly, where you put the rod under your armpit, and hand over hand, 
pull the flies back. Again, retrieving and pausing. And at the end of every retrieve, you want to slow up and slowly raise the rod and try and induce a take through the technique we call the hang. The hang markers on all Rio's in-touch sinking lines uh, identify when to do this at the end of the retrieve because the fish will often follow these flies and as you raise the rod for the hang your fly changes speed as it rises up and direction and that triggers the grab so when you're fishing attractors always fish it right to the end because many of your takes come right at the end when that fly looks like it's fleeing and the fish just pound it so keep those tricks and techniques in mind when you're fishing attractor patterns I hope you enjoyed today's how-to video on how to fish attractor patterns in lakes using sinking lines. The next time trout seem to be ignoring all of your natural presentations, give these tricks and techniques a try. Be careful, you could become addicted as these takes to these flies can be aggressive. For more information on the products used in this video and to see additional how-to videos, please visit Rio's website at reoproducts.com. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We hope to see you next time on a future how-to video.